hidden in the quiet valleys of the United States are many horse breeding farms. These supply the growing demand for good horses. For today, there are over 10 million horses in the United States, twice as many as in 1920. It is morning at Hidden Valley Farm, and only Bonnie and her colt Toby are awake. Bonnie wants everyone to get up. She is the pride of the farm, as she is a grand champion and was imported from France. In Paris, she was judged one of the 10 best Percherons in the world. Bonnie is her pet name. Yes, Buttercup the cat is just waking up too. He is hungry and wants his mother, and he doesn't care who knows it. Bonnie and her stablemate, Black Mammy, are both eager for the day to start. Horses that are good friends are placed in adjoining stalls because they will be happier and so do better work. They are also teamed together in harness. Pat hurries with his morning chores. He has charge of the draft horses and all day long he takes care of them. All right, Toby, don't rush, Mama. Your turn will come later. Later in the summer, these horses will be shown at the fairs and horse shows and must be in perfect condition. Ah, at last it is Black Mammy's turn. Bonnie watches all that goes on as the farm wakes up. Gallant Knight, the big stallion brought from France, is being taken out for exercise in his own paddock. Bonnie, I think, would like to go along. Gallant Knight has a powerful neck, deep chest, and strong back. His colts should be fine, strong workhorses. Stallions like this raise the standard of horses on American farms. Well, Bonnie would like to go out to pasture with him, but her turn will come later. And there he goes. Black Mammy is patient. She is glad she is not Gray Cloud, who she sees is going to be groomed. Gray Cloud and her six weeks old colt will be kept in their own paddock. Gray Cloud has won many ribbons, and so her colt is very valuable. On a breeding farm, every horse has individual care. Proper feed keeps a horse strong. Then he can do more work. Now, oh, don't hide, youngster. Nobody is going to hurt you. A colt can stand a few hours after it is born and soon runs around like an old timer. As in everything else, there is a correct way to groom a horse. John uses a curry comb, a brush, and a cloth. The rubber curry comb cleans out the dirt without scratching or irritating the skin. The brush takes off the dirt and the cloth smooths down the hair. Yes, colts, like babies, need many naps. John begins at the head and combs Gray Cloud's forelock and brushes her head. Then, with a few expert sweeps of the brush, he cleans the back and sides. Legs and ankles receive a good grooming. The fetlocks, the hair on the ankles, are well combed. Gray Cloud knows that John is caring for her and so she stands patiently. And John is mighty proud of the fine coat of this champion mare. Large farms have their own blacksmith shops. Here the blacksmith is shoeing a horse. He has already trimmed the hoof and fashioned the iron shoe to fit exactly. Now he nails it firmly in place. This does not hurt the hoof, which is a horny material like, well, like our fingernails. He drives the nails expertly and never touches the tender part of the hoof. With a quick twist of the wrist, he breaks off the nail and fastens it. Horseshoes should be replaced regularly. For without shoes, the hoof would split and wear down to the tender quick when working on hard roads. When turned to pasture, the shoes are removed to rest the feet 
and also the horses are less likely to injure each other by kicking. Rough edges are smoothed with a file or rasp and the job is finished. Sometimes horses and dogs become such close friends that the horse cannot sleep if the dog is not in his stall at night. When the horse is shipped by train to another place, the dog goes along so that the horse will be sure to sleep well. At last it is time for the men to take Bonnie and Black Mammy out to pasture. Bonnie is proud of her coat and she likes the hours spent grazing. Grass is very good food for a horse. Horses on the range live on grass alone. It contains the vitamins and minerals necessary for a well-balanced diet. However, well-cared-for horses are given additional food to help them develop and to make them stronger. Bonnie watches her friends as they are brought in from pasture to do the afternoon work on the farm. These horses will change places with the horses which have been working all morning. Hidden Valley Farm raises many different kinds of horses, including Percheron, Belgians, Tennessee walking horses, and Kentucky saddle-bred horses. Most of these are Percheron, the breed of heavy workhorse. Many of these were imported from France. Several are worth thousands of dollars. These draft horses are built for power, not speed. They must have weight to haul the heavy loads. They weigh between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds. The horses are driven in carefully to avoid excitement and injury. In the paddock, the men examine each horse for injuries that might need attention. And those that need treatment are separated from the others. On a breeding farm, most of the herd are mares. They do the farm work, but are also used for breeding. After the noon feeding in the paddocks, those not needed, for some reason, will again be turned out to pasture. Come along there, youngster. <coughs> Bonnie is hungry and anxious for her noon dinner. Pat brings her a mixture of oats, barley, dried beet pulp, and molasses. She has the best of everything because he is getting her in top condition for the coming fair. Well, well, that does taste good, doesn't it, Toby? Yes, little Toby starts eating the same food as his mother when he is a month old. He will also take milk from his mother until he is six months old, and then he will be weaned. Baby colts take milk from their mothers about once an hour. Toby is shy, suspicious, and curious. He wants to know about everything, and on the other side of the fence, the grass is always greener. The horses needed for the afternoon work are harnessed and hitched. Each horse has his own set of harness, which is made to fit him. Collars must be padded and fit comfortably. Rubbing or pinching will cause sores. A horse well-fed, well-shod, and properly harnessed will do better work. These horses do all the heavy work around the farm. This team hauls hay to the different paddocks and pastures. Some horses eat in pasture, some in paddocks, and some in their own stalls. Pat sprays the barn seven times a day because the flies annoy the horses and keep them from resting. John is cleaning out the stalls in the modern sanitary stable. Clean straw, well shaken up, is the best bedding. Stalls should be cleaned morning and night, and fresh drinking water should always be on hand. Now it is time to bring the horses in for the night. Bonnie is glad to return to her comfortable stall where her supper is waiting. Toby will sleep in the stall with his mother. Hi up there, young fella. Many of the horses will spend the night in the pasture. Some sleep lying down and some standing up. 
There she goes, the pride of Hidden Valley Farm, a champion in her own right and the mother of champions. Thus we see how careful and scientific care have produced these gentle and intelligent friends and helpers of mankind.